Welcome to the Going Carnivore in Thailand channel. Well, where have I been? I have been very, very busy. Between finding a new place and preparing to get out the pool villa I'm at, that takes up a little bit of time. Also, I've been doing a lot on my Mark Dash Hannah channel, which is about retirement on a Bitcoin standard. I started a podcast over there where I'm interviewing people uh, who are also into Bitcoin. I also been doing live streams, some short live streams, but a lot of them go in several hours. I mean, I've even had three hour live stream where People ask questions and we comment about current events and news events and look at charts and graphs and that's kept me real busy. Uh, Noi is totally off carnivore and I'm on carnivore still. Today and yesterday were salmon days because we had went to the store and bought fresh salmon, not frozen and had some wonderful salmon. Tomorrow night will probably be chicken night. Uh, tonight's gonna be ribeye night. Have I lost more weight? Eh, I don't know. Uh, I feel like I've lost some inches. Uh, I feel good, I feel healthy, which is the main point. Uh, slow and steady wins the race. I have to admit, it's been harder for me to be 100% strict carnivore with Noi not joining in. I mean, it's like she'll throw a piece of watermelon in my face and say, have a bite of watermelon. I'll take a bite of watermelon. Probably isn't the worst thing in the world. My blood sugar, which I was really thrilled about when it was 97, sometimes is 120, sometimes is 114. I haven't seen 97 for a while, and that's probably because I haven't been strict enough to get to 97. Kicking a insulin resistance is the hardest thing in the world. I mean, it's just so tough to do. And I checked out a doctor named Dr. Boz, and uh, she's got this thing that says, if you really want to kick your blood sugar low, you have to eat sardines for 72 hours. I can't do that. I hate sardines. Now, Noi eats what I call ugly fish. We just always called it ugly fish. And I didn't know what kind of fish it was. Finally, I said, don't they have a name for that in Thai? And she said the Thai name. I said, well, put that into translator and see if it comes up with an English name. She loves mackerel. I don't like mackerel either, but I like mackerel better than I like sardines. And I did hear Dr. Boz says, well, if you can't absolutely stomach sardines for three days, you could try something like mackerel for three days. And I thought to myself, well, why, why can't it be salmon? Yeah. You know, why can't it be swordfish? It's something I'd eat, you know, or hell, even cod, you know. But no, they want you to eat that. And maybe I'll end up having to do it if I want to get my blood sugar kicked down. Now, after I get moved, we have made plans, not formalized, but, but I want to go back to Bangkok Hospital and have that complete, comprehensive, all day, 30 different test checkup ran. That's where they run basically every 
blood tests known to man and then they check your blood pressure and all four of your limbs at the same time and they do all the ultrasounds and hearing tests and eye tests and throat tests and you name it they check it ultrasounds check your gallbladder check your kidneys look for kidney stones look for gallstones and uh They'll tell me I still have non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which so many people do when they have insulin resistance, which comes from 20 years of a sorry American diet where the U.S. government lied to us and told us, don't eat fat. Well, fat is what you should be eating. You know, saturated fats are so bad. And then they give you high fructose corn syrup by the gallons. That's worse than sugar. I mean, it's literally worse than sugar. But we're going to go back after we get in the new condo. Right now, I'll show you a little 11 second tick of tonight. We finally signed the actual paperwork for the new pool villa been buying a lot of stuff. The owners never had anybody live in this pool villa. It's brand spanking new. And we've just met one of the most fabulous owners. I mean, whatever it needs, she wants to get it done. She literally added one air conditioning in the main, added one air conditioning unit in the ceiling in the center of the main unit. And then the other two were improperly sized when they were put in new they weren't big enough so she went like with like 12,000 or 24,000 BTUs all in the main unit so now they got uh 48 78 84,000 BTU of air conditioning in three units in the main living room dining room kitchen area which is a lot and uh, I showed you a night picture we just left there of the pool at night. And it's absolutely gorgeous. I mean, you know, and it's it's so convenient. You can just jump right in at night. The lights light everything up nice. And be it, it it's so warm here, you can swim at night, which is good exercise. So people on my Mark Dash Hannah channel, at sign Mark Dash Hannah. Somebody said, will you come over here and make another video and say what happened to you, to the channel on the going carnivore? I'm still going carnivore strong because it just makes me feel better. I don't instantly eat and feel like I absolutely 100% am tired like I did when I ate all the super carbohydrates. Yeah, you know, no pizzas. No, I have, if I have a sandwich, by the way, for you carnivore nuts out there like me, I found these big sticks of three inch in diameter pepperoni and had them sliced up and eat pepperoni as a snack because... Well, jerky's hard to find and so damn expensive, but pepperoni's not cheap. But I figure that's meat with fat. That probably fits into a carnivore diet, but I'm not sure. So leave me a comment below and tell me what you think about slicing up a three-inch pieces of pepperoni into eighth-inch slices and just eating it as a snack when you're hungry. Is that good for you? not good for you I don't know so I'm alive I'm well I'm feeling good living the good life wish I didn't have to move but glad I am moving the new place is nicer and very in, in a lot of ways tomorrow I gotta go over and meet the guys who put in the solar panels on the roof and explain to me how that works and hook up your app to it and uh, 
evidently you can tell when you're using solar power and that which hopefully will cut down the utility bills here in thailand the utility bills for this pool villa they're coming in just about a little over ten thousand baht which uh we're only getting 32 baht to the U.S. dollar nowadays, so that went up. Don't know exactly what that is, but you can count. 32.4 baht to the U.S. dollar divided into 10,000. So, it's a lot of money. $300 a month for electricity. Thailand isn't any cheaper on electric than it is in the United States, really. Unless you're in California, New York, or one of the ridiculous states. But if you live somewhere like Texas, I would imagine that the Thai electric's not much less or more than Texas. Something like that. 300 a month, I think, is pretty reasonable. Especially because you're, you're in a climate that's hot all the time. I mean, yeah, other you have to use it in the winter. But, you know, you get... In America, you get springs and falls where you really don't have to use a lot of air conditioning or heating, either one. Spring and fall is so beautiful. So you get a few months out of the year where you don't have to use anything. I mean, it never gets really cold here. Not where I'm at. So, I mean, you know, even in, in the wintertime, it, you know, it go down to 82 degrees at night or 80 degrees at night. And it really didn't get much colder than that here. So everything's doing well. I appreciate you for watching. And uh, leave me your comments below. I read every one of them. I respond to most all of them I can respond to. That's all, folks.